This is Twit. Where is hacker culture now um, in general and how has it changed over the years? Um, because uh, hacker culture way back was you're doing everything on your desk and you're doing everything in your basement or wherever else it is. And uh, um, you were you're saying, and Sean was saying too, you move a lot of stuff into the into clouds. But what's it about now? And, and because, and especially how you're seeing people using your gear that you're selling them. I don't know if you have any much of a window into what happens to your stuff after it's been sold, because I know you don't spy on people and a lot of other people do, companies do. But where's yeah. it at now? Yeah, I mean, a lot of, yeah, a lot of our own experience would just be anecdotal from people who, who choose to, to contact us later and tell us how they're using the products. I have some sense just from support requests that I've helped with over the years, sort of where some of our customers are. But so as far as, well, I'll, I'll take a step back and talk about hacker culture to begin with. So I, right now, I would say hacker culture as it is, is much, much, much more diverse than it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago, because technology is far more accessible. Um, technology these days is part of every single person's life when they, you know, if they're in the, in the past, it might be, if you want to go into certain businesses, you may need to then learn how to use a computer and get some level of computer literacy. But, you know, 30 years ago, that wasn't necessarily a given. And so people who were focused on computer programming and that sort of thing were a subset of the population just because it wasn't a ubiquitous thing, but now everyone grows up using technology and they're exposed to it constantly. And technology as a result is way more um, accessible than it was 30 years ago when the only people using a particular technology were the geeks that were writing that software, for instance. Now there's an assumption that you need to have things that are friendly to use, that are convenient um, and are accessible to everybody. And so the culture is reflecting that now, you know, to the point that, you know, computer programming is now almost, is like shop class in the 1970s, where there's this assumption that you need to go to, you need to take your computer programming class in high school so that you have at least an option for a, a well-paying job when you get out of school, you know, um, whether that will bear out over the long term, who knows, but, but that's at least where we are today, where, you know, your average, your average student in whatever school is now being exposed to computer literacy, not just using a computer, but writing software for it because it's so much more accessible. Um, and I think that's what's caused. And that was part of um, my talk in uh, Bristol was the culture clash that this is his cause because traditionally you have a, a very, you know, traditionally geeky nerdy culture because you kind of had to be, you had to have some of those attributes um, and a certain level of, of aversion to socializing to, to be, uh, to get into uh, computer programming in particular, a lot of this technology many years ago. Uh, that's not true anymore. So you have sort of that culture still exists and it has been involved in free software, for instance, forever. But there's also just more popular culture because all of this stuff is now mainstream. I mean, your average person now is talking about what's going on on the internet, what's going on with technology and writing, in some cases, writing software and learning to do it in high school or middle school, elementary school, even in some cases. So that culture is more of just sort of like the, the, the average culture. I liken it to, and, and the clash is a result of, I think, I likened it, I think, in the talk to um, some, some uh, geeks throwing a D&D &D party. And the word gets out that there's this really cool party uh, at this person's house. And then all of the, everyone else in high school, all the jocks show up and turn it into a kegger. And then there's this conflict. Um, and I think that we're still seeing that conflict sort of bear out today in the free software community, but I think in the tech community at large, where every, everyone, uh, just uh, the, like across the spectrum, um, are involved in technology now. And there's a, it, it's a culture clash just because they're, they all come from different backgrounds and have different expectations. That's interesting. And uh, using you personally as an example, I mean, the, the last time we were at a conference together, you were wearing a pirate t-shirt and, uh, you know, you were, you were considered pretty, you know, cutting edge, uh, hacker life. Now you are the president of a company. I mean, that's, it's become part of just standard culture, like, like you said. And so is there, I mean, that, that does mean that since standard culture is now, uh, including what used to be specialized nerdy geekdom for lack of buzzwords, uh, 
if that's part of the standard culture, is there now a fringe that has kind of taken over as that subset? And I, I don't expect for you to be able to identify that even because, you know, I mean, you're now the president of a company, right? But I'm curious. I mean, there must be some, uh, what happens at DEF CON, right? What happens at DEF CON now, I guess, is my question, because that, that used to be the, the kind of uh, people that you more than me uh, were, <laughs> you know, back in, you know, a decade or two ago. Uh, is there still that that fringe group that is the the elite nerds or has culture just become that i think there's definitely like that culture remains there's still i mean most of those people are still around <laughs> you know they, right. they and they still have the same sensibilities for the most part that they did in the past uh and that and that even among younger people who are entering into th this this field or entering into this community, I think there are still people that are like that for sure. It's more, it's more of an and than an or or whatever. There's still a fringe of people that are super nerdy, super geeky, um, socially awkward and, you know, and have issues with talking to people. I mean, it took me forever to go to a conference and be able to go to a room where I didn't already know people and dared to strike up a conversation. I mean, this is an achievement over the last like five years, maybe, uh, where I realized I could do that finally. Uh, and before that was difficult. And a lot of people are still in that boat. I think it's just, it, even if you go to DEF CON, there will be all of those people who still have like a punk rock aesthetic and all of that. Um, but then you also have all of these other people that just look like everybody else in the world, um, which I think is really cool. Uh, where you just have everybody that's involved in, and they're like, yeah, yeah. What are you, where are you involved in? Yeah. I'm just like, I'm hacking cars right now, <laughs> or, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm picking, I'm learning how to pick locks and, you know, just your average people now, because it's again, technology is part of everyone's life. Now you didn't have to, you didn't have to have a special interest to get a computer or, you know, and use a computer and, and use technology. It's just sort of baked into society. Now. Tech break is brought to you by ACI learning. ACI Learning is a lifelong career training partner for audit, cybersecurity, and information technology professionals, transforming how employers train and professionals learn while following global standards for certification and career development training. See why ACI Learning is trusted and loved worldwide. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit to learn more. <laughs> 